Okay, so this is a close-up of garlic mustard. This is a young one, I'd say like first year, because in the second year they start flowering, getting these white flowers. Hold on, I will show you. Ah, let's see. Yeah, can you see those? They're very tiny little flowers. Um, oops, having trouble with my focus today. So, this is an older plant. This is over two years. This thing's big. So, when I went to go pull this, you know, I checked this one out. The roots were already pulled up a bit. I don't know why. I should have had to dug, I think, to get this out. Yeah, look at that. It just comes right up. Um, I don't know if you could see in here. That's the root. So that's what you would make garlic mustard horseradish with, which I am thinking about doing. Okay, so we have, well, all kinds of this stuff. And, you know, the ones that are older and flowering. And then I see new growth back there. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up some big plants and get the young leaves, which I think, now I've never tasted this before. I did taste the flowers. They're very good if you like things that have a kick to them. I liked it. So I'm going to dig up some young leaves and some older plants. And we'll see what happens. So stay tuned. Okay, everyone. So I'm about ready to pick this one here to pull this one up. This one looks like a much younger plant than the first one I pulled up. I'd say it's second year. If there's any new growth around here, I will pick that too. So I think what I want to do is see if it'll come up by hand or if I need my shovel. Because that first one, it just, you know, came up so easily. So, let's see. For some reason, they, oh yeah, look how easy these come out of the ground. Now we've had a lot of rain and it's very humid here today. These come out very, very easy. They just pull right out. For some reason, I'm always finding them near the wild black raspberries. I don't know why, if there's a significance to that. Let's see if I can find out. It could be these things just grow anywhere. So, in the woods. So, and where I am right now is the edge of our property. Like, this is the southerly end of the property. And the woods runs all along it. So, I'm going to see, I give this, I give this raspberry bush a, point, a chance. So, I'm not really seeing any new growth over here. Now there's a bunch back here. This one, yeah, they just came right up. They are small roots. Okay. So here's the next one. So by harvesting these, foraging for these, I'm actually doing the woods a favor because they these deplete nutrients from the soil and it doesn't give native plants a chance to grow. So that's why they tell you, harvest the whole plant, root everything, even if you don't use it, because it helps the woods, it helps plants in the woods. Yeah, very easy to pick. Beautiful roots. Here's a young one. So anyways, if it's just rained and your soil's nice and moist in the woods, which usually it is, you could just pull them out. Bring a shovel just in case, but they just pull right out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to forage for more of these. I was trying to decide what I want to make. Now, like I said, I tasted the flowers. They were very good. Although that's kind of stuff I like. It's like kind of tangy with kick to it. So you have to like that kind of thing. 
Um, and I do love garlic too, and I love mustard. So anyways, trying to decide what I wanted to make. So I was thinking either make them like mustard greens or making a pesto sauce. I found recipes for both. And then if I really like it, I'm going to clean off the roots, grind those up and make, um, garlic mustard, horseradish, and can it and save for other dishes. So that's what I'm planning on doing. So hang with me. I'm going to get some more. Then we'll go in the kitchen. And I'll sort through these and see what we think. Okay, so I think I'm going to stop here with harvesting. I got a pretty good amount. So um, I want to leave some of them, which there are plenty, because at the end of summer or early fall, I want to collect the seeds because I love to make homemade mustard. Now, even though this isn't actually mustard, I hear these seeds do make um, a good garlic mustard condiment that is very similar to, you know, regular mustard. So I want to give that a try. So I am going to leave some of them. This is my experiment today. Okay. So if I like the meal that comes out with this, I'll do more with garlic mustard. So stay tuned because we're going to go back into the kitchen. Okay, so after I got done harvesting my garlic mustard, I took my hose, my garden hose, and I really rinsed it as best I could, both roots and leaves. Um, now, they say one of the problems about this is that creatures, you know, out in the wild don't like to eat this. Now, I know when I walked up to the door, my dog greeted me and he backed away once he smelled it. Then my cat Draco came to greet me at the door and he backed away. So this is true. However, I see little bite marks in here, which means there are insects who like this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick through my leaves and discard the ones that have been eaten and the ones that are good I'm gonna put in my colander so I can rinse again and let's see I will be keeping the flowers um, in case I want to put those in a salad or anything that one's been eaten I may end up with less leaves than I thought. So they say what you could do is just like, all right, this is, what do they call this, the shoots? So if you bend it where it breaks, just like with asparagus, now this one, it broke, but it's not coming apart totally, that's tender enough to eat. So you could put this in your recipes too. You get too far down, it starts getting woody, and you don't want to eat that. But everything else you can eat. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to pick through my leaves, and of course I will be cutting off the roots and saving those, hopefully to make horseradish. So if I can find where I put my colander, it must be in the dishwasher. Let's see. Yep, there it is. So anyways, I'm thinking I'd like to make a pesto with this because I'm in the mood for macaroni. So a nice pesto sauce would go good. I have some angel hair in the cupboard, angel hair pasta. So I'll use that. So I'm going to pick through this. I will show you what I've done and then we'll get to the recipe. Okay, so stay tuned. Okay, so for this recipe, I need approximately two cups of leaves packed, which are in here. So, what I have found, a lot, well, I had a couple plants that were really good, but I had to be very careful because I found a lot of bite marks. I found a lot of evidence of slugs. So, slugs do like this. Um, also, what you want to be careful of is I found when I pulled this up, I also pulled other plants too. I picked up a couple of leaves and I'm going, wait a minute, this does not look like garlic mustard. So be very careful of that. Also, whatever you are getting rid of, your scraps, they do not want you to compost it. 
because it's so invasive, they don't want to take the chance of it being in compost and growing again and spreading. They want you to literally throw it out in a, in a trash bin. Um, so I will go through the rest of these later. I think I'm going to make these like regular mustard greens and saute them. Don't know if we'll do a video on that or not. We'll see. Um, but for right now, we are going to make pesto. So bear with me. Okay, so we are now ready to make the pesto. Please don't mind my mouse here. What I've decided to do is I, I'm too tired to make anything else. I'm just going to make the pesto and boil up some pasta. I'm going to toss the rest of these. I'm going to take the roots off because I'm going to save the roots for horseradish. And then I'm just going to toss everything. And then when I want to um, saute the garlic mustard greens or the leaves, um, then I will. I'll just harvest more. So anyways, we're ready for the recipe. Now where I got this recipe, I have to give her credit. It is from a blog called The Vintage Kitchen Vixen. Really good blog. And I also found her YouTube channel, which is really good. So look her up. She's really great. She's up in Quebec. And when, like she said, even when she's out foraging, she wears vintage clothes like she's from the 1940s. It's a really, really great YouTube channel. So go subscribe to her. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to put two cups. Now she used the young leaves, you know, the new growth. Um, I used both. So... I'm going to toss these in. So that's two cups. Then the best part, we want a half a cup of grated, and I think I have the Corno Romano here, cheese in here. We want a quarter cup of olive oil. Your dog who wants my attention. It's Sirius's birthday today. It's May 15th. He turned three today. I don't know if you guys can see him over there. I think he wants to go back outside, but he's got to wait till I'm done. So we got the olive oil. We're going to throw in a quarter cup of walnuts, one clove of garlic, and salt and pepper to taste. So I'm just going to, oops, throw in, it's so humid here, my salt is clumped up. Okay, so I'm going to put that in, and some pepper. I suppose you could even throw in some hot sauce into it. I put hot sauce on the left, it's like, just for the heck of it, I love hot sauce. Okay, so, I'm going to. Blend this. Up. I'll be right with you, sweetie. Mommy's almost done. Put this in here, and what do you got? I thought I plugged this in. Okay. So I think you know what else I'm gonna do. I have some fresh squeezed lemon juice. I think I'm gonna throw some of that in. She did mention that. Lemon juice would brighten it up a bit. So I think I'm gonna throw some of that in. Good. It smells really fresh. I think I'm going to give it a couple of zhuzhas without adding more liquid. See what happens. Okay. Still have some leaves up here though. Come on, get down there. It's really looking good. Okay. 
Oh yeah, it looks really good. I'm gonna taste it. Oh my God, so good. So good, I'll bring it closer to the camera so you could see. It's really delicious. So I'm gonna whip up some pasta, put this on there and have dinner. Um, so I'm gonna leave you with that. Blessed be and make it a joyful one. Mm -hmm.